Hi, I'm Sarah. And I'm Mike. And we're, we're here, here to, to talk, talk about, about internet, internet encryption. encryption. But before we get into that, if you work in enterprise IT and you have a network, be sure to check out the Ixia Network Makeover event, which is happening right now over at makeover.ixiacom.com slash labs for your chance to win a $50,000 network makeover. Be sure to use that link and you'll get an extra entry. Also, make sure to subscribe to this channel and like this video. Now back to the internet encryption fun. So Mike, have you ever noticed the S in HTTPS in the URL bar of your internet browser? Why yes, Sarah. Yes, I have. And do you know what it means? Well, you see, I studied communications in college, so no. I really don't have the foggiest idea. Well, would you believe me if I told you that I could explain it with this paint I brought today? Well, you see, I've learned to always trust engineers. So yes? Last year, the Internet Engineering Task Force published a new standard for internet encryption, Transport Layer Security 1.3, otherwise known as TLS 1.3. The main update in TLS 1.3 is the requirement of an ephemeral Diffie-Hellman key exchange that's generated for each communication session. Okay, okay, okay. You, you've lost me. That means each time you click on a link on Keysight's website on your laptop, your internet browser and Keysight server are sending encrypted messages back and forth. The way in which they communicate uses a method that allows both to talk to each other secretly without anyone else being able to hear. That method is called Diffie-Hellman. Okay, and so where does the paint come into all of this? Let me show you. Let's pretend that you're on your laptop and you click on a link on the Keysight website. Okay. I'll act as the Keysight server and we'll exchange a secret message. Sounds good to me. First, we agree on a common color to start with. So anyone tapping our network can see this color. Let's pick yellow. Now, each of us will choose our own private color, and we won't share it with each other. You got yours, Mike? I do. No peeking. Now, mix your private color with the yellow, since that's the color we originally agreed on. Once you're done, we'll trade. So, someone spying on our exchanges that have taken place so far can only see the colors yellow, orange, and green. Now, we switch and each of us adds our own private color to the mixture we just got and compare the results. For the record, I'm a better artist than she is. <laughs> so Mike, what'd you get? Uh, looks like dirt to me. I like to consider it more of a mauve. As you can see, we both ended up with the same color. That's our shared secret message. You just literally blew my mind, Sarah. So, unless you or I told someone our private colors, no one else would be able to read our message. That's because you can't unmix our resulting color back into the original colors. It's almost impossible to get the exact shades we started with. So, let me get this straight. This is how Diffie-Hellman internet encryption works? Exactly, but with very, very, very large numbers. You want to see the math? Cool. So, do you know what modular arithmetic is? Do I look like I know what modular arithmetic is? I'm not gonna answer that. <laughs> but it's basically when you find the remainder of a division, like 45 divided by four, it equals 11 with a remainder of one. It's written like 45 mod four, where 45 is the generator and four is the modulus. 45 mod four equals one. So basically, modular arithmetic only cares about the remainder. Okay, I'm following you so far. Let's use the same scenario as last time. Pretend that you're on your laptop, you click on a link on the Keysight website. I'll pretend that I'm the Keysight server and we'll exchange secret messages. Okay, cool. First, we agree publicly on a generator and a prime modulus. This is like the yellow paint we used. These are numbers anyone spying on the connection can see. I think we should choose three and 23. So the equation would look like three to the X mod 23 where three to the X is our generator, but we'll define that later. In the real world, these would be huge prime numbers. But you've dumbed it down for me. Next, each of us chooses a random private number, which we'll call X. We don't tell each other those numbers. I always knew you were keeping secrets from me. Now we compute the modular equation. For those following along at home, you can use a calculator for this. In the real world, the computer does this for you. Well, thank goodness for that. Once each of us has done the computation, we exchange the results, which are public. What did you get, Mike? Mm, I got 18. Cool, I got two. You know what that means? No. Okay, it doesn't mean anything yet. 
Okay, awesome. So let me get this straight. Since we didn't tell each other our private numbers, at this point, someone spying on our connection can only see 3 to the X, mod 23, 18, and 2, right? That's right. It's time for another computation, though. Oh, no. Take the number I gave you and raise it to the power of your private number, and then compute the modular equation. I'll do the same with your number. Okay. Now, what'd you get? Mm, six. Same. We both got the same secret message without exchanging private numbers. Whoa, no way. How did you do that? It doesn't seem like it, but we actually did the same exact computation. What was your private number? I didn't think I was supposed to tell you, <laughs> but it was nine. Mine was seven. So our math looked like this. Just like mixing the colors before, the strength of Diffie Hellman relies on the ease of computing an algorithm and the difficulty in reversing that computation. This is called the discrete logarithm problem, a type of algorithm that has several different viable number options that can satisfy a certain modular equation. In our example, someone trying to spy on us would have a hard time figuring out how we got our results because three to the X mod 23 equals two. X could be 18, 29, 40, 51, the list goes on from there. It's very difficult to reverse the function to find the original private key, just like finding the original colors. Now imagine that math with really, really big numbers. That's how the internet is encrypted. Well, I gotta hand it to you, Sarah. You taught me Divi Hellman with paint. That's amazing. So um, circling back though, does this mean I should only be visiting websites that use HTTPS because otherwise my connection isn't secure? Yeah, that's the safest route and websites that use TLS 1.3 are now considered the most secure. Okay. To find out more about TLS 1.3 and how to implement it, check out the Ixia webinar linked below. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos like this.